Hallelujah, Lord. Amen. Merry Christmas, everyone. Turn around and greet one another. Merry Christmas. Amen. Thank you, Lord. The Lord is with us. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. Let us now settle ourselves and be in the spirit. For this is the Lord's day. Amen. As John said, I was in the spirit during the Lord's day. And then he received revelation from him. Let us pray. Jesus, our Emmanuel, our Savior, and our soon coming King. Lord, thank you for this day. This particular Sunday, God, we can celebrate your birth. You left the glory and the splendor of heaven to come to earth and take the form of a man. You came, Lord, to seek and to save those who are lost. You came as our Emmanuel, God with us. And so, Lord, we celebrate and worship you, our God, our Savior, our King, our Master, the lover of our souls. We worship you, hallelujah, as the angels did and the wise men did and the shepherds did, Lord. We too, Lord, bow down in worship. And we give you our lives as gifts, living sacrifice, holy, acceptable in your sight. So, Lord, even as we remind ourselves again about the name that is above all names, the name, that wonderful name, that sweet name, Jesus, we may be encouraged, Lord, to love that name, to serve that name, and to worship the name above all names. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen and amen. The name above all names. Turn your Bibles with me. The book of Matthew chapter 1, verses 18 to 25. Or you can read it from the screen. Matthew chapter 1, verses 18 to 25. This is how the birth of Jesus Christ came about. His mother Mary was pledged to be married to Joseph. But before they came together, she was found to be with child through the Holy Spirit. Because Joseph, her husband, was a righteous man and did not want to expose her to public disgrace, he had in mind to divorce her quietly. But after he had considered this, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream and said, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take Mary home as your wife. Because what is conceived in her is from the Holy Spirit. She will give birth to a son, and you are to give him the name Jesus, because he will save his people from their sins. All this took place to fulfill what the Lord had said through the prophet. The virgin will be with child and will give birth to a son, and they will call him Emmanuel, which means God with us. When Joseph woke up, he did what the angel of the Lord had commanded him and took Mary home as his wife. But he had no union with her 
until she gave birth to a son and he gave him the name Jesus. He gave him the name Jesus, that wonderful name. Amen. That name above all name. Every year, we celebrate Christmas. And it has become a Christian tradition. But sad to say that most Christians celebrate Christmas without the spiritual significance of it anymore. Most, if not all, celebrate it the way the world does. It is for entertainment, attraction, vacations, commercial gain, parties, and back in the Philippines, employees look forward for their bonuses and their 13-month pay. We don't have it here, huh? No. So they look forward for that. Now, personally, I'm not against it. As long as we do not lose focus for the reason of the season. Amen. Was it yesterday that I read from the Yahoo News that a public school in Long Island, New York, had their Christmas celebration and the kids, the choir, the children's choir sang Silent Night. But then they omitted the word Christ in the song Silent Night because they don't want to offend the non-Christian in the school. And the first statement says, the name of the word Christ is officially removed from Christmas. And that is sad to take note of. Thank God the Christian parents stood and made their stand against that and said, you wanted the non-Christians not to be offended, but what about us who owns the song, The Christians? Amen. Amen. When we stay focused on the spiritual significance of Christmas, we see it around our homes and communities. Right? Christmas tree, I thought of the wooden cross where they hang Jesus for you and for me. Christmas decorations, I thought of how Jesus made my life beautiful. The nativity reminds me that the Son of God became flesh and dwelt among us and we beheld His glory, the glory of the only begotten of the Father. Christmas lights. I thought of Jesus as the light of the world. Jesus said, I am the light of the world. The Christmas tree topper. If a star, I thought of Jesus as a bright morning star or the star that guided the wise men to where Jesus was. Amen. If it is an angel on top of the tree, it reminds me of the angel who made the announcement to Mary about the birth of Jesus or the angels who sung the, the night Jesus Christ was born. Hallelujah. The gifts under the tree reminds me of God's gift of salvation. The Christmas candles reminds me that we are the light of the world. Amen. Well, Sato said there's no snow in Fresno, but if, there, if you have snow, or, or real or fake, it reminds us of Isaiah chapter 1 verse 8 and it says, Though your sins are like scarlet, they shall be white as snow. Amen. When we greet one another in Merry Christmas, we are expressing peace and goodwill toward men. When we give gifts and receive gifts, we are expressing love for God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son that whosoever believe in Him will not perish but have everlasting life. 
Amen. Now you see, if we do not lose sight of the spiritual essence of Christmas, we find its significance in everything we see and do around our homes and in the community, and that makes this season more meaningful to us and closer to Jesus, who is the reason for the season. Amen. Hallelujah. In a spiritual sense, church, as people of the Lord, let these things we see around us today in your home, in the church, or in the community draw us closer and to see Jesus as the reason for Christmas. Without Jesus, there's no Christmas. A child is born to us, and his name shall be called Jesus, and Emmanuel, meaning God is with us. Glory to his name. Amen. Now, an angel told Mary and Joseph that they shall name him Jesus. Amen. And Jesus is the name that God told Joseph and Mary to name the baby boy. In Matthew chapter 1 verse 21 it says, She will give birth to a son and you are to give him the name Jesus because he will save his people from their sins. I like that church. Amen. Names in the Old Testament and the New Testament has meanings. They have meanings for us today. In fact, they reflect who they are. But thank God that God sent His Son and named Him Jesus because He will save His people from their sins. Hallelujah. Thank God that you and I who are in Christ right now are forgiven from all of our sins. Hallelujah. And will become friends of God. Thank you, Lord. Matthew 1, 23, it says, The virgin will conceive and give birth to a son, and they will call him Emmanuel, which means God is with us. Woo, hallelujah. I think no man on earth, no matter how handsome or beautiful he might be or she might be, is worthy of that name, Emmanuel. <laughs> Amen. Because it's the name of all names. Emmanuel, God is with us. And St. Paul said in Philippians chapter 2, 9 to 11, Therefore God exalted him to the highest place and gave him the name that is above every name, that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow in heaven and on earth and under the earth and every tongue acknowledge that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Jesus is Lord. The baby in a manger did not remain a baby. Luke recorded that the baby grew in grace and in knowledge, hallelujah, and in wisdom, and he became our Savior. He suffered, he died, he rose again, hallelujah, and soon he's coming back. Praise the name of Jesus. He is Lord. Can I hear you, amen? He is Lord. Just an observation from our reading. I noticed that from Matthew's account of the birth of Jesus, Matthew tells the story with a focus on Joseph. While from the book of Luke, it centers on Mary. And from the book of Matthew concerning the birth of Jesus, some noble qualities of Joseph are certainly seen in this passage. First, that he was a righteous man. Hallelujah. He was a righteous man. He was from the line of David. Joseph, though a carpenter, was from the royal blood, from the line of David. David, and so also with Mary. So here we see that Joseph was a righteous man, and also we, 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 we notice here about his tender consideration for Mary, and his willingness to bear ridicule. He was about to be married to Mary, but then Mary was found to be with a child, and during those days, it's a no, 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 no. 
Mary is in danger of death, public disgrace, and likewise Joseph. But we see here about Joseph's tender consideration. And the names by which the son of Mary be called signifies good news to all of us this morning. Amen. The name given by God, hallelujah, for the baby boy born through Mary, hallelujah, signifies good news to us. One name describes his office. What was he to do? One which describes his nature. Who was he? An angel said to Joseph, you shall call his name Jesus. Now, for some simple historical association of that name, it is, in fact, a very common Jewish name often given in memory of Joshua, the Hebrew form of the name Jesus. Jesus in the Old Testament is Joshua, and Joshua in the New Testament is Jesus. And it's very interesting to compare these two figures of history. Joshua led the nation of Israel into the promised land, Canaan, while Jesus leads the people of God into the promised land, heaven. <laughs> Hallelujah. Both the name Joshua, meaning God saves, and the name Jesus, also he will save his people from their sins. Church, not that only, but we can all see the significance of that name, the name Jesus. Hallelujah. Jesus and Joshua means God is Savior. And rightfully, Jesus or the Son of Mary is called Jesus because he will save his people from these few things. One, he will save his people from the guilt of sin, right? He will save his people from the guilt of sin. The Bible said all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. And that the wages of sin is death. But the guilt of God is eternal life through our Lord Jesus Christ. You and I are guilty of sin. No matter how good you may look. No matter how nice you may look, no matter how obedient you may look, we are all guilty of sin. For the Bible said, no one is righteous, no, not one. All of us have sinned and guilty, but thank God we have Jesus. Thank God this morning we can rejoice and be thankful that it was a Christmas day that a Savior was born to remove all our guilt if we put our trust and faith in Him. Number two. He will save us from the power of sin. Hallelujah. In these last days, church, you and I will see and observe the increase of the power of sin. But thank God, those who are in Christ, no more guilt, are also free from the power of sin. Hallelujah. Why? Because of the sanctifying work of the Holy Spirit that helps us, amen, to walk holy and pleasing before the Lord. It's the Holy Spirit given to us that will sanctify us, amen, from the power of sin, amen. Not only church from, from the guilt of sin or from the power of sin, but that name also, the name above all names, Jesus, will save us from the consequence of sin. Hallelujah. I said a while ago that the wages of sin is death. But the gift of God is eternal life. But Romans chapter 5 verse 9 tells us, Since we have now been justified by his blood, how much more shall we be saved from God's wrath through him? Thank you, Jesus. That's what the book of Romans says. Therefore, there is no more condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise the name of Jesus. The power of death is no longer upon us. Hallelujah. Because Jesus took away the consequence of sin upon us. We have been justified by the blood. Amen. How much more shall we be saved from God's wrath through him? Finally, ultimately, from the presence of sin. Amen. Today you and I are living in the presence of sin, we see it so prevalent, 
so controlling in our days today. But thank God, when we depart to be with the Lord, we have a Savior who will take us away from the presence of sin and to be with the Lord for wherever He is, there we might be also. Amen. So love that name. That wonderful name. That the angel said to Mary and to Joseph, you shall call him Jesus for he will save his people from their sin. Let us celebrate Christmas, church. In mind of that gift that God gave us freely. That gift of eternal life. Because of that name, Jesus. No wonder his name is above all names. Hallelujah. And so the name of Jesus should be a very encouraging name to heavy laden sinners like you and me. We can always call upon that name. He said, call upon me and I will answer you and show you great and mighty things which you do not know. Amen. Call upon me in times of trouble. I will be there. That wonderful name, the name Jesus. Glory to God. As Matthew recounts what the angel told Mary, he adds that, that the birth of Jesus also fulfilled the prophecy of Isaiah in which it is said, that they shall call his name Emmanuel. Amen. Emmanuel. Praise God. It says prophecy concerning this name is found in Isaiah chapter 7, verse 14. Isaiah chapter 7, verse 14, in which a virgin would give birth to a child who would be called Emmanuel. Amen. And the significance of this name Emmanuel literally means God is with us. Can you confess it this morning? God is with us. Can you declare it this morning with all conviction and faith in Christ? God is with us. Or make it personal. God is with me. God is with me. I was talking to Brother Dennis how time flies. A few days from now, it's 2014. Right? 2014. But knowing that God is with me, knowing that God is with us, we welcome the new year, hallelujah, with an open arms and faith that still 2014 is going to be a good year for all of us. It's still the year of the Lord's favor. Because God is with us. Because God is with us, hallelujah. And this name describes the Messiah's nature, and that is, He is God. Jesus is God. Isaiah 9, 6 tells us, For to us a child is born. For to us a son is given. And the government will be on his shoulders. And he will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Amen. Amen. John 1, 1 tells us, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. And verse 14 of the same chapter of the book of John says, and the Word was made flesh and dwelt among us, and we beheld His glory, the glory as the only begotten to the Father, full of grace and truth. I like the Word, and He dwelt among us. Hallelujah. Think about that. And he dwelt among us. God. The mighty God. Who dwells in heaven. Who is the Alpha and Omega. The God that is none like him. Came down and dwelt among us. Glory to Jesus. What an honor it will be for me that one day the President of the United States, the most powerful nation in the world, would make a call and said, Are you Eddie Chua, pastor of Holy Ground Family Fellowship? Yes, I am. This is President Obama. I wish to have a vacation in your home for one month. 
Oh my gosh. The president of the most powerful nation in the world will go down to my humble abode and take his vacation for one month. Alien and I would be so crazy preparing for things for him to be more comfortable. I would call him, do you eat Filipino food? <laughs> Glory to Jesus! But the one who dwelt among us is not the president of the most powerful nation of the world. He is God, the creator of the most powerful world. Hallelujah. He is God. He is God. His name is Jesus. The name above all name. Jesus, because he will save his people from their sins. And for him to save us from sin, he must take the form of a man like you and me. So he will die. But yet, at the same time, he is our God. Amen. And when we see him, we see the nature of God. Hallelujah. Amen. And that's what John said. We beheld his glory. We saw him. We felt him. We touched him. He is our God. No wonder the blind eyes opened. No wonder the lame walked. The dead rose. Hallelujah. And the sick healed. And demon depressed were delivered because of that wonderful name. And because of the sweet name. That mighty God. Hallelujah. Our mighty counselor. You and I are privileged to know him today. Amen. Celebrate Christmas therefore. Amen. And bow down at the name of Jesus. And let every tongue confess that Jesus is Lord to the glory of God the Father. If somebody forget to give you a gift this Christmas, don't get hurt. <laughs> don't, get, don't feel bad. Right? Because the truth of the matter is, you have the gift. You have that gift. That perfect gift. That no human being can give, but only God. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. Glory to Jesus. Embrace that name this morning. Love that name this morning. Serve that name this morning. Confess that name together. Let your knee bow down at the mention of that name. Let your tongue confess that Jesus is Lord because His name is above all names. His name is Jesus. And He came to save His people from their sins. He is our Emmanuel. God is with us. Knowing that God is with us, walk this life trusting Him with no fear. Because if God be for us, who can be against us? Amen? Amen? Stand, please. Stand together, please. Hallelujah. Oh, Jesus Christ. Think about that name. Let's serve that name. Hallelujah. This morning, in our nativity story, we saw a baby. But for him to be a savior, he needs to grow. We don't look back in memory of a baby. We look back to the memory of him who hung on the cross. For that is the reason why he came. To seek and to save those who are lost. Oh, come, let us adore him. Let us adore that name. That sweetest name. That name above all names. Oh, come, let us adore Oh, come, let us adore Him. Oh, come, let us adore Him. 
Thank you, Jesus. And you know what, church? The best gift that you can give to the Lord this morning is not material, but your heart, your life. He came to redeem your life. He came to remove guilt in your life. He came, hallelujah, thank you Jesus, to destroy the power of sin in your life. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. He came to die for you. That if you put your trust in Him this morning and give your life and give your heart as a gift to Him who gave His life as a gift for you, that you may receive the gift of salvation. Let's have an exchange gift with him this morning. Receive his gift. Give your heart and your life as a gift back to him. He will take care of that gift. He will love that gift. He will treasure that gift. Because he is expecting and waiting for that gift from you this morning. From you this morning. Think of no other gift but your heart, your life. Give him. Give it to Jesus. And receive his gift as well. Father, this morning, I will stand in your presence looking to that name. That name above all names. The name Jesus. We look to Him as our Savior who will save us from the consequence of sin. Hallelujah. And one day when He returns or when we depart from this world, He will also, Lord, save us from the presence of sin and live in a place where there is no more sin. So today, church, make a commitment. Make a prayer to give your heart, your life to Jesus. And I know that the Holy Spirit is here. I can sense His presence. I can sense His power. And I know that you understood the message. That there is such a name, above all name, the name of Jesus, that can save you and forgive you from all your sins. If you receive Him now, the Bible said that if we confess our sins, He is just and faithful to forgive us and to cleanse us from all our unrighteousness. If you're here this morning, and anybody here, this invitation is for all of us. Would you like to come to the front and give your heart as a gift to the Lord? Would you come to the front and give your life to the Lord? And say, Jesus, I give my life to you. And I receive your gift of eternal life as well this morning. As we sing the song again. I will come and bow down. Would you like to make the first move? That this Christmas Sunday, you will remember that you gave your heart to Jesus as a gift. That you surrendered your life to Jesus as a gift. Come and give it to the Lord. Lord, accept my gift as I receive your gift as well. Hallelujah. There is nothing, Lord. Yes. Amen. Yes, come. I take pleasure Give your heart to Jesus as your gift. Give your heart to Jesus. 
surrender your life to Jesus. Amen. I will come and bow down. Yes, Lord. At your feet. Yes. Amen. Yes. In your presence. Give your heart to Jesus. Give your heart to Jesus. Offer your life as a gift. Wrap it in a spirit of humility. Wrap it in surrender. Wrap it with your surrender to the Lord. I say, God, I give you my heart. I give you myself. I give you my heart. Yes, oh Jesus. Amen. Amen. Oh, hallelujah. Amen. Amen. I will, Lord. Heaven is your throne. Oh, hallelujah. And the earth is Jesus. your footstool. Bless, oh God. Hallelujah. Jesus. Lord God. Amen. To bow down in the name of Jesus. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, Jesus, Lord, amen. Oh, God, I pray for them this morning. In the name of Bahaya, in the name of Jesus. We surrender, Lord. We give our hearts to you, Lord. Amen. We offer our hearts to you, Lord, today. Take it as your gift, Lord, from us. Hallelujah. And in return, Lord, we also accept your gift of life for us, O oh God. In the name of Jesus. We also accept your forgiveness. We also accept, Lord, life that comes from you. Oh, hallelujah. Jesus. I surrender all. Yes, Father God, as a church, we we'll give you our hearts, our lives. And I pray, God, that use these gifts according to your purpose, plans, and perfect will, dear God. And thank you also, Lord, that we receive today the gift of eternal life. We thank you for that name, that wonderful name, the name above all names, the name of Jesus. That every tongue confess that he is Lord to the glory of God. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. God bless. And Merry Christmas again. Before you take your seats, greet one another one more time. Merry, Merry Christmas. Praise the Lord. Amen. So many prophecies about Jesus, about his birth, has been fulfilled, about his life, about his death, and his resurrection. And now, prophecies about his coming. And we see the signs. And so it's time to get serious with God. Amen? Not only when it's Christmas, you come forward and dedicate your life. But every day, because the Holy Spirit is already in us. Amen? The gift is in us. It's the Holy Spirit already. That's how God is with us, in us, every day. So every morning when you wake up, thank the Lord. For the miracle of life and the Holy Spirit in, in you and I. Amen. And it's a gift. He's a gift that keeps on giving. And so our lives should reflect the glory and the character of God, which is generosity. Amen. Not just in finances, but give your smile, give an encouragement, give good things that comes from within us through the Holy Spirit. Amen. So as we give this morning... Let's be always in an attitude of 
generosity and thanksgiving because there's so many things you can be thankful to God for. Amen. Before the year ends, you list down and count all your blessings. And that will keep you in an attitude of gratitude all throughout the year every day. Let's pray. Lord, we thank you for Jesus. We thank you for the Holy Spirit. We thank you for you have set an example of generosity to us. You have given fully, O oh God, and you have given more than enough. And so the same way, Lord, we pray that we can become more like Jesus by your Holy Spirit in us. Make us givers, O oh God, givers of joy, givers of hope, givers of the good news of salvation in Jesus. Givers, O oh God, of substance to bless others. Givers, O oh God, to one another, to our family, to our friends, and even these strangers, O oh God, to be givers, O oh God, of, of life to them. And Lord, we give you these offerings and our tithes, O oh God, with an attitude of gratitude because you've done so many great things. And we give this in Jesus' name. Amen.